On behalf of the National Loon Center, Leah Hagerston and myself, Carol Henderson, I'd like to bring you up to date on a few tips for living with loons for June in 2020. Uh, there are lots of things going on. The loons have been hatching and showing up on our lakes. And uh, this is a lot of excitement for developments, not only for the loons, but also for the National Loon Center. Minnesota obviously is one of the most popular birds we could imagine as our state bird. We have the largest population of common loons in the lower 48 states, and we intend to keep it that way. We had a big survey done, a breeding bird atlas from 2009 to 2014 that documented the distribution of loons in Minnesota. You can see that they are found nesting all the way from Lakeville area, south of the Twin Cities, up to the Canadian border. One of the things that you can do on behalf of our loons would be to sign up for the Minnesota Loon Monitoring Program. This is a special program designed in 1994 to keep track of loon population trends. This was done through the DNR Non-Game Wildlife Program. You can simply Google Minnesota Loon Monitoring Program, their webpage, and you can sign up and the survey period is from the last week of June through the first week of July. There are six different areas where each area has 100 lakes that volunteers need to cover. As of a week ago, we still had 109 lakes out of 600 lakes that need volunteers to cover those lakes. Uh, some of the lakes go all the way from the Wilmer area down in Candy, Ohio County, up through Itasca, uh, County, Cook and Lake County, and of course, right in central Minnesota in the Aiken Crow Wing County area. These are randomly selected lakes where when we do counts on these lakes every year, we can get a good long-term trend in what's happening to the loons. Here's a diagram showing results since 1994, showing how we have the percentage of lakes with loons diagram and that lowest line with the dots uh, it started out at about 30 percent. That's down in the Candy Ojai County area. You can see that over the years there's been apparently an improvement in water quality and an improvement in the numbers of loons. The farther north many of the areas are remaining fairly stable. So if you want to have a big adventure it's usually a one-day trip uh, to uh, one of these special lakes and you can meet some new people, get out on some new lakes and uh, check out the loons. Number two, support your Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. They have a revitalized Get the Lead Out campaign to help our loons avoid lead poisoning. This is being developed with remediation money from the Deepwater Horizon oil spill uh, with funding coming to Minnesota for the next three years to help reduce the loss of loons. We have about 30 loons that are turned in every year that are lead poisoned, and I'm sure the number lost in the state is probably much greater than that. And with uh, further developments, we should have lead tackle exchanges occurring at some of our local bait shops and sporting goods stores to help promote this issue. And we need to remember that one of the best things you can do when you go fish fishing is to check to start using a lead-free tackle box. Uh, any jigs and sinkers, an ounce or less in weight, are dangerous to the loons. So with that $1.2 million of remediation funds, this is a unique program in the whole United States where we will be hopefully getting started very soon. Unfortunately, the hiring freeze that was initiated back in March because of the coronavirus has prevented the hiring of the two people are supposed to lead this program. So we are hoping that the uh, hiring freeze will be lifted very soon so we can proceed with the program as planned. So watch for developments on this. Loons in some ways are like a chicken in that they need little pebbles to grind up the food they eat. In this case these are pebbles actually from the gizzard of a loon and look there's a lead sinker that killed the loon. It only takes one split shot or a sinker to kill a loon. They dive to the bottom, they pick up these pebbles, and they usually have two or three dozen of these little pebbles in their gizzard, and if they accidentally pick up even one piece of lead, they die. And this is why we need to 
create an awareness among anglers that this is something that's no longer necessary because we have more and more alternatives coming up in the way of alternative tackle. This is an x-ray of a loon that died because it actually uh, ate a whole uh, fishing set. It has the hook, line, and sinker, so to speak, uh, because it must have tried to catch a minnow that someone was fishing with. And sometimes they become entangled in this fishing tackle and uh, are unable to feed. So don't throw your extra fishing line in the water, take it home, destroy it. Or, and also if a loon does become entangled, it needs to be captured and then taken to a wildlife rehab center for a rescue operation. Unfortunately, we have loons that show up every year that have died for various reasons. And lead poisoning is one of the top three reasons that loons die in Minnesota. And that loss is totally avoidable. So keep your eyes out for get the lead out, tackle exchanges. This is gonna be a very big step in helping move, move toward lead-free fishing. We're using small jigs and sinkers that will not poison the loons. And this is a great way to get children involved with fishing and loon appreciation as well because they certainly don't want to be poisoning our state bird either. And there are many different companies that are now responding to this problem. And if you go to the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency website at Get the Lead Out, it lists over 50 businesses that manufacture non-toxic small jigs and sinkers, once an ounce or less. Many of them are based right here in Minnesota. So check them out, they need your support, and buy some as gifts for your angler friends and family. The other thing you might try is go jig and sinker shopping. Ask your local bait shop uh, salespeople or local sporting goods store people and managers to see their loon safe lead free jigs and sinkers. In many cases, they won't have a clue what you're talking about. There's not been a very good effort to promote this in the fishing industry. And before the prices can go down on this, we need to develop a much larger market. Number four, support le state legislation to require the use of non-toxic small jigs and sinkers of one ounce or less. This is not unrealistic. There are six states that have all taken legislative action to save loons. New Hampshire, New York, and Maine, they have prohibited sale of jigs and sinkers that are led uh, or the use and sale in case of Maine, smaller than 2.5 inches long or less than one ounce. Also Massachusetts, Vermont, and Washington also taken actions. Uh, in Washington, lead sinkers and jigs uh, are prohibited on lakes uh, used by loons. So all of this has happened, but nothing yet has happened legislatively in the Midwest or in Minnesota. There were efforts to get this started this year uh, House File 3825, eliminate use of lead in small fishing jigs and sinkers. It was moving forward well in the House, but it stopped moving and got no, little support in the Senate. So I guess you could say the current status on that one for this year is dead in the water. Express your support and appreciation to other writers who advocate non-toxic jigs and sinkers. So one of our writers in Minnesota with the Star Tribune, Dennis Anderson, has taken an important stand realizing that not only is this a problem for loons, but it's also a problem for humans associated with manufacturing lead tackle, like with the problems that have shown up with the, the water gremlin company. So lead is also really bad for people. It's a toxic, neurotoxic poison. Here's another article, getting the lead out. In some cases, tungsten and jigs have actual advantages over lead. And this is becoming more popular, not only in summer, but also for ice fishing. Here are some of the companies that have moved ahead and started come out, coming out with uh, non-toxic jigs and sinkers, the Dr. Drop. Uh, here's Northland Tackle, Minnesota-based. Also uh, Maynard's in Minnesota. They have all kinds of jigs available. Here's Acme, Hammered Tungsten Jigs. And so all of these are available, but you have to really look or go online to find where you can get them. And the final thing that I'll recommend is that you need to take the time to go out and enjoy the loons. Right now they're out there with their families, do this at a respectable distance for maybe a couple hundred feet. You can kind of learn to read the loons behavior 
if they're bothered by you, they will swim away. They'll avoid you. Some loons are very accustomed to people and they can be approached quietly and, and uh, very easily, uh, but not too close. You don't want the loons to uh, be exposed to danger and you don't want to scare loons off their nest because crows, ravens, or gulls can fly down immediately and break the eggs uh, and uh, the chicks could be lost for the year. And the other thing is that we, it is enjoyable to photograph the loons, to see them, to take people out and, and enjoy the state bird. Um, but the other thing is that the most traumatic weekend of the year for loons is 4th of July weekend. This is when we have a lot of people out on the lakes and we have a problem that weekend with people running over loons and loon chicks by speedboats or boats that are not watching where they're going in terms of where the loons are. So. Uh, give the loons a break uh, whenever you're out, but especially 4th of July weekend, spread the word that the loons need our uh, concern and safety as well. So enjoy the loons, take some time to enjoy them, and we hope that, we hope that these six tips will give you some ideas on how you can help improve the status of loons in the state and keep them as abundant as they have been for many years. Thank you very much. This is Carol Henderson, and I appreciate the opportunity to uh, cooperate with the National Loon Center as one of their board members to uh, promote loon conservation. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Hi, I'm Leah Hagerston from the National Loon Center. Carol Henderson is on our board of directors as well. Um, and uh, Matt Killian, another local name, is uh, from the Brainerd Lakes Area Chamber of Commerce. They have pledged to be our operator for the Future National Loon Center. I just want to say a little bit about Carol and thank him. He is the, is, he's a famous loon researcher, if you don't know this, um, educator, conservationist, and he's been internationally recognized. He is the creator of the DNR's non-game wildlife program, um, created it back in 1977. Um, he's written 13 books, and um, most recently his claim to fame was bringing $7 million from the British o uh, Petroleum Oil Spill to our state to help for uh, loon um, survival. Um, I want to give you a little update on the Loon Center. 2020 has been um, a very tough year for all of us, for our country, for our world. Um, but we are staying true to our mission at the Loon Center, um, focusing on the environment, our state bird and fresh water. Um, three quick updates. We are currently finishing our curriculum with the University of Minnesota. Thank you, University of Minnesota. And now working with the local uh, Small Business Development Center at CLC to move forward with our business plan. Pending approvals, we um, hope to begin our outdoor initiatives, which is a huge shoreline restoration project, um, boardwalk, outdoor exhibits, um, with many of the practices that Carol just spoke about um, as outdoor interactive exhibits. Um, also fun is we are fundraising and we just got our first major gift from Margaret A. Cargill. Um, and so that was a big deal because we do need uh, matching funds for our $4 million state fund. I'm going to um, end with thanking the Brainerd Lakes Area Community Foundation for this opportunity and um, play our video for you um, so that you can get an idea of what we've been up to and where we're going. The call of the loon is a call for change. Scientists say that loons might not exist in Minnesota 50 years from now if we don't start making some changes today. Did you know the quality of our lake water has steadily declined over the past 50 years? Loons need clean, fresh water to survive and thrive. We all do. The National Loon Center will help all of us become leaders for loon preservation and fresh water conservation. The National Loon Center will be a place of discovery through hands-on learning. Interactive exhibits in and around the center will inspire visitors to help protect loons and our freshwater ecosystems. The University of Minnesota will help create research and educational experiences through citizen science, including a floating classroom. The center will house the Scientific Loon Council and the National Freshwater Institute. These initiatives will bring together the brightest minds from across the country to find solutions that tackle threats to loons and freshwater. 
families, nature enthusiasts, and scientists will have access to more than 1,000 feet of protected shoreline on the beautiful whitefish chain of lakes in Cross Lake, Minnesota. This popular recreation area is projected to see 200,000 visitors each year once the center is built. Plus, millions of people will be engaged online. The National Loon Center Foundation has received $4 million from the state of Minnesota, a $2 million federal in-kind lease, and $1 million from community contributions to help build the center. However, $6 million from corporate and foundation sponsors is still needed. You can make a difference. You can help protect our loons, preserve our lakes, and inspire the next generation of conservationists. Donate today and help us answer the call of the loon.